What's going on guys? I don't even know what camera to look at right now. So we got a pretty serious head to head going on tonight. Um, what I wanna do is compare the Insta360 One X against the GoPro Hero 7 Black against the Osmo Pocket. Um, and what we're gonna do is compare low light. So I'm in Lithuania for a week and we've got a good opportunity here to really kind of check things out. Um, but unfortunately it's all at night. So we're gonna go get some different scenery shots. We're gonna kind of walk around and about and we're gonna check a lot out, but it's gonna be nighttime. So really what I think we can do here is test the white balance, test the ISO, uh, test the frame rates, really see how these different cameras stack up in low light because I think that's a pretty common use case for these. The other good thing we can see is kind of how the stabilization works on all three of these against one another. So that's my plan as well. With that, let's go ahead and dive in and go get some cool shots. See you out there. All right, so right now we're walking down the street. We've got a good amount of lighting. It looks like, at least on the screens, all of these cameras seem to be doing pretty good. The uh, Insta is the only one that doesn't have a screen, so I really have no idea how it's doing. Let's go ahead and flip these around. What do you guys think? How do these look? GoPro, Insta, Osmo. Pretty impressed so far. All right, so now we're walking down a park. Uh, it's pretty well lit, but you know, it's street lights, so it's nothing too crazy. Good chance here to kind of check out the stabilization on these three cameras, see how they look. Let's also go ahead and flip around now. So one thing I want to talk about is cropping the sensor. Um, on the GoPro specifically, I'm shooting wide angle and I know they all have kind of different frames depending on how you look at them. Obviously the Osmo is going to be a lot more cropped in. Long story short, uh, we're shooting all of these kind of in their native mode as much as possible. That way we're keeping things even, keeping things fair, and we can really see which one's going to work better. All right, I want to stop for a sec. I'm pretty sure you guys can't see it um, because of the type of zoom range on these cameras, but this is actually pretty cool. So where we're headed is called Three Crosses, and kind of up on that hill, you can definitely see that bright shining light. Probably looks like a star. That's where we're headed. I didn't realize it was illuminated, so it's going to be very easy to see. Um, but we're going to go to the top of the hill and take a look at Vilnius overall. So you can see we're headed to a very dark area. However, the monument itself is pretty well lit. I'm excited. Let's go check it out. All right, so let's take a quick pause here. These next few scenes are gonna get pretty dark. The reason being, I really have to push these cameras as far as they can go, so that way you guys can understand what differences they have. In these next few scenes, there are gonna be differences between each of the cameras that I want you to see, but again, the scenes are gonna be pretty dark. Um, so we'll have some fun, we'll tell a story, but let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at performance in extreme low light now. So this is gonna be a really tough shot for all three of these cameras. We have some lighting, but it's water, so you're talking about a lot of detail. Uh, curious how these compare to one another. The white balance, or the screens at least, look very different between the Osmo and the GoPro here. No idea, again, how the Insta looks because it doesn't have a screen. Just very serene here, though. Very calming. We're going up towards, you can kind of see the light there. That's the crosses. I don't think we can see anything on this side. And then kind of back to the river. Another thing to note, we're not gonna do any post-processing. So everything you're gonna see today is gonna be straight out of the camera. We're heading up the path here to the three crosses. You can see them up there, that glowing blue. Ooh, uh, that's a fence. I don't know if you guys can see this. Um, unfortunately, there's a fence here that's closed. Let me get on my GPS, see what we can do. Uh, hopefully there's another path to take, but I'm not too sure. First time here. So foreign country, you never know. So we got some good news. And we got some bad news. I found the right path. There's no fence. Um, but I might get murdered. <laughs> so we're going to go for it. It's actually not too late. It's only about 8.30 right now. I don't think you guys can even see that. Uh, let me flip it back around here. So we're going to walk up there. I don't know if we're going to see people, murderers, what. Uh, let's have some fun and check it out. All right, so no idea if you guys can see anything right now. I'm out of breath because we're walking up the stairs. It's the highest point in Vilnius, um, so it's going to be an awesome view, but let's see. The screens are all black. I don't think we're getting anything. Extreme low light. Um, I can see pretty well there's residual light from the city, but let's see if any of these guys can pick out any of this. I got to say from what I can see, it looks like the GoPro is winning, but that's simply based on the back of the screens here, and that's 
from what I found, not the best reference. So if you made it this far, congrats. And uh, good news, I didn't get stabbed. You obviously saw the voiceover up there. It was really scenic and I didn't want to interrupt uh, kind of the you know atmosphere up there. So I'll do a voiceover. Um, we're in a park right now. Fun fact, the Insta is completely dead. <laughs> the GoPro is at 44%. The Osmo is actually at 74%. So Osmo's crushing battery life compared to the other two. Now the other two have replaceable batteries. The Osmo doesn't. If the Osmo dies, I have nothing I can do. So I think I would choose the GoPro if I had to worry about battery life. Uh, and the Insta kind of sucks over here because I, I can't even show it to you right now. Let's go back to the hotel warm up. We're gonna take a look at the footage, wrap up with our thoughts. So we'll see you back there. All right, so that's it. I learned a lot actually filming this video and editing it. Now that I've seen the footage, it was a lot of fun um, and I was very surprised. You can tell in some of the scenes. I actually thought the GoPro was winning as I stated because based on the back of the screen, it looked the best at the time. I really think in the end, uh, the Osmo did the best overall, arguably with low light. When you look at things like the scene on top of the hill here, I mean, the clarity was just night and day compared to the other two. The GoPro did well, however, on both the GoPro and the Insta360, you see that kind of weird stabilization shake because it's digital where the Osmo was actually able to smooth things out pretty well because it has the mechanical gimbal built into it. The Osmo was really orange, the color temperature really varied and I just didn't find it pleasing. However, you can fix that stuff in post. So if you wanna edit it later on, it's not unusable. Uh, just something to be aware of how it kind of handles low light and really is gonna make things very warm. And then honestly, let's talk about this Insta360. It blew me away. Uh, not only did it do pretty well in these low light scenarios, but what I found as I was editing the footage is it allowed me to kind of capture whatever part of the scene I wanted because by its very nature, it's capturing everything around you. So if I found my face wasn't exposed, maybe we could look at the scenery while I was talking. Well, all I have to do is flip it around in editing. I don't have to lose the scene. Whereas on the GoPro and the Osmo, there were a few scenes I actually filmed that I didn't even want to show because you couldn't see anything at all. In terms of audio quality, because we were switching throughout the video, I'm gonna give it to the GoPro. For me, it had kind of the deepest, richest sound and captured it well. Osmo second, and then the Insta audio really is just not that good. I don't think it's designed to be because the camera by itself is meant to be, you know, farther than you. Um, I left everything else right around kind of zero dB, but I actually had to boost up the Insta360 to max in all of the scenes inside of Final Cut. So it's plus 12 decibels. It's still usable at that point, but it didn't sound anywhere near as good as either the DJI Osmo Pocket or the GoPro. It's really tough. I wanted to choose a winner, but after looking at the footage, they all three kind of performed with their own advantages and disadvantages. I think the Osmo had the arguably best picture quality overall and let in the most amount of light without a lot of noise. However, the Insta had probably the most usable footage only because I had so much flexibility later on when I was editing. The GoPro had the best audio and I also liked the framing it allowed me to do because it's wider. You don't have to worry so much about your face and where you are in frame when you're vlogging. So that's gonna be it guys. This was probably the funnest head to head I've done so far. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing Subscribing. I've got a lot more content coming out throughout 2019. Go ahead and leave any questions in the comments and I'll see you next time.